up guys? We're just about to head into the mountains to take some snowmobile photos. I'm gonna show you exactly how I do that. It's one of my favorite things to shoot and it's a lot of fun. Uh, I got my 25 year old snowmobile here. Brother-in-law and his buddies got their brand new sleds. So they're gonna outrun me. Thankfully, since there's a lot of fresh snow, they can break trail for me. So I can actually get my old sled in there, get to a good shooting position. Should be a lot of fun. So come along, let's do it. We just got up to the first spot here, which is this tailings pond. And uh, I see her in the sun in the background here and this like berm thing. And they've been doing, uh, I don't know what the professional terminology is. So just, this is it, I'll write it in text. So they're, they're going up, kicking up a bunch of snow. It's all backlit. Basically, I'm just seeing photos I like and then tell them I'm like, hey, go do that. But I take a picture. Not super complicated, but still fun. So I told you I'd tell you how to shoot snowmobiles and basically I haven't done that yet. In this situation, we just came out, we had you know a good subject, a decent camera, some good light. Basically all I did is start saying like, Hey, go do this. Hey, go do that. And if they're comfortable with it, they say no. If they or if they're not comfortable with it, they say no. If they are comfortable with it, they, they just go and do it and you shoot it. If it doesn't work. Just say go again. And yeah, I think I think where these photos could sort of come to life is when we stick them in the computer, get to editing them. That could be in this video or the next one. Um, but thankfully, when we get back to computer, you know, on these breaks, I've already made selects. So when I go to the computer, they're already there and I need to go. Thought it'd be funny to point out how good these sleds look. And this is probably all I would want to show you in camera today. And then my sled. Not a good look, but I love it. And I'm thankful for it. All in all, that was a solid day. Lots of good riding going on. Here's Noah coming down. We're just heading back to the truck. Cannot wait to get these photos in the computer, get looking at them. Can't wait to show you guys. What's up you guys? So we just got back from the snowmobile shoot and I got all the photos into the computer. We took 4,694 photos today, which probably sounds like a lot, but with the burst shutter speeds of these new cameras is really not that many because with 30 frames a second, you hold your finger down and then that's 120 photos right there. So anyway, near 4,700 photos today on the snowmobile shoot. Uh, thankfully on our breaks, I was making selects as we go. So the way I do that is I just hit Q on my Canon R6 and star five. So we have 147 selects. I'm just gonna take you through how I edited this one photo here. I started off with cropping it so that it's 16 by nine, which is classic cinema ratio. I also adjusted the horizon so that the trees are pointing straight up rather than being sideways. For the color grading, we had to bump that exposure up a bit. I always get my contrast up around 30, 40. Now, this is where it gets kind of important is that the highlights you see here are at minus 100, while the shadows are at plus 44. Uh, usually, uh, so like in perfect lighting, theoretically, your highlight and shadow could both be zeroed out. But that's just not gonna work for us. Uh, we need that lower highlight and a positive shadow to make the subject pop. The natural highlights were just so bright um, that I brought them down as far as the program would let me. And I'm bumping that shadow up to increase the exposure of our subject. 
out. The blacks are down, which is actually rare for me. Usually I'll have my shadows down and my blacks up, but as you can see here, if I were to do that, the picture just looks washed. It looks really bad. For whatever reason, the lighting calls for me to do the opposite of what my typical edit would be. Also here with the whites, uh, went plus 18. This is about as far as I can go without blasting out the whites, which you don't want to do. So texture, I'll usually go positive on the texture. In this case, you can probably get around plus 10 without making it look artificial. Clarity, I like to go in the negatives for clarity because the modern lenses these days are so sharp that if you go positive in the clarity, it just, it just does not look realistic. So you sort of take that unrealistic edge off the uh, new lens by, off the new lenses, sorry, by going negative in your clarity. Uh, for dehaze, I'll go in the positive. It kind of acts like a uh, extreme version of contrast. Moving on to vibrance and saturation here. For example, if I were to go, you know, plus 10 on vibrance, I would usually go plus here on saturation in the event that a photo didn't have enough color to it. Uh, in this case, there's a lot of color present in the actual file. So I want plus four vibrance, plus one saturation. Anything more than that is just gonna give it too much color and look kind of unrealistic. Uh, tone curve. I was trying to do something pretty specific here, which is uh, expose the shadows more, down expose the midtones, because the midtones were great, uh, if not a little hot, and the highlights, uh, I bumped them up. So sometimes I'll do this, this like reverse S curve thing. Uh, it just sort of works with my editing style. This is what it looks without it, kind of bland and clipping in the blacks. That's what it looks like with it. A bit softer, but still punchy. Just works for me. HSL here. Uh, the yellow and green sliders trending towards the orange, which is typical for me, as well as the aqua and blue are trending towards teal, which is also my norm. Uh, not saying I try to hit the teal and orange thing, like the trend. It's just the color palette I like to hit. I like to go opposite sides of the color wheel, which would be you know, orange and blue, or you know, let's say green and purple, that kind of thing. Now into color grading. This used to be called split toning, but now it's called color grading. I will go with a uh, blue shadow in this case uh, that's down illuminated with a saturation of about 16. Uh, yellow mid, up illuminated with a saturation of seven, and a magenta highlight uh, down illuminated with a saturation of five. Uh, I like this setup here. It leans toward filmic. Of course, I'm not trying to go full like film emulation, but it leans in that direction. And I like that. Sharpening, this photo handled plus 85, which is surprising. Uh, I'll do this thing here called masking where I see what's actually being sharpened. I'm not trying to sharpen everything just start the rider and the snow the rider's kicking up maybe a bit of the trees noise reduction we don't need any because we shot at iso 400 the lens corrections are on all the time and grain i went with my usual which is an amount of 20 size of 25 and a roughness of 50. if the pixel count if the sensor size was larger i might change that up but i have a 5.5k sensor and these sort of work with a 5.5k sensor. Uh, calibration, didn't do a whole lot. Main thing going on here is the blue primary hue is down minus 17, which sort of show what that does. Uh, leans it towards that teal and orange thing, but we don't want to obviously go all the way. It looks like crap. So minus 17 was about good. Uh, let's blow it up, take a look at it. Looks not bad, looks pretty realistic. I'll show you a couple of the masks and then uh, pretty much wrapped. Uh, this mask three is probably the main one. It makes a difference. I took this subject and inverted it and then added a little bit of blue plus exposure to the background. Make it just sort of wintry, more cool. And then there's these masks here, which uh, it's up in exposure with a bit of a dehaze. And the goal of that is to 
make it look like a sunny glow because there wasn't one. And then mask five, we're just bringing in uh, a shadow from the bottom to lead your eye into the subject. And that's it. Uh, hope you like this video and I'll see you on the next one. Hoping to make a lot more videos just like this one. Uh, so if you got any ideas of what you want to see from me, what I can help out, help you learn how to shoot or how to edit, uh, I'd love to hear it. Those are the videos I want to make. I want to make videos that genuinely help you guys. That's basically my goal for the whole year is I want to come on YouTube and make videos that help you learn how to make videos and take photos. That's basically my goal for the year. So I hope this helped with that and I hope you guys have a great day. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.